I am about to reverse sear two gorgeous aged ribeye steaks. Traditionally, we would cook a steak by throwing it into a hot pan and then maybe finishing in the oven until it reaches its final internal temperature. Reverse sear kind of flips that on its head. It sort of borrows a page from the sous vide book. The steaks go in like this into a very low oven and they very slowly come up to temperature. And only when in the center the steaks have reached your desired temperature do you take them out and then you sear them at the end to get the nice brown flavorful crust on the outside. Why do we do this? Well, for one thing, it gives us better control and a more foolproof method than if we went from high heat right from the start. This slows everything down, buys you a lot more time, and your margin of error is much bigger. The other really great thing about the reverse sear is because these steaks are hanging out in a dry, hot oven, the surface will continue to dry out the whole time it's in there. Dryness is what you want when it comes time to sear the steak in a pan. A probe thermometer will track the temperature of your meat while it's in the oven. And I'm gonna just guess at where I think the center of this steak is. Eh, I th about there. If you're cooking a bone in steak, just make sure you don't put the thermometer's probe up against the bone. That's gonna really throw off your readings. If you don't have a probe thermometer, it's okay. You just use an instant read thermometer to monitor the progress of your steaks. And I'm gonna set an alarm. 105 Fahrenheit, I'm aiming for 115, but this gives me a 10 degree head start to make sure that I don't mess up. Ah! Ah, it's time to put the beef in the oven and let it do its thing. And then this has a magnet that can stick. It's reading 49 degrees Fahrenheit on the nose. The other one's a little bit warmer, 53.3 degrees Fahrenheit. And I have an instant read thermometer that I will use to confirm what these probe thermometers are telling me by taking a few other readings and a few other parts of the steaks just to make sure that I've got it right. The thing is with the reverse sear is the steaks are gonna jump a little bit more when they're out of the oven. So we wanna pull them out a little before whatever our real desired final temperature is. For rare, that means taking them out when they're about 105 Fahrenheit in the center. For medium rare, that means pulling them from the oven when they're about 115 degrees Fahrenheit in the center. And for medium, 125, et cetera, et cetera. That doesn't mean medium is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Medium is actually warmer, 130, 135, more up there. But that's gonna happen in the pan when they come out of the oven. Sometimes it's slowest at the beginning and you think you get a sense in your head of what the rate of cooking is. It starts speeding up. I think it does. I've never tested that empirically. I'm pretty sure it starts speeding up. That's been my experience. Keep, it, keep an eye on your meat. Any second, that alarm is gonna sound. My steaks are right at 115 or just a hair shy of it. And I've already got my cast iron pan preheating. I'm actually gonna crank the heat now. I'm gonna get a tablespoon of oil in the pan. I want this oil smoking hot. My goal here is to preserve that kind of perfect doneness in the center of the steak. So I really wanna get the sear on this meat as quickly as I can so that I don't start overcooking the exterior. That, and the whole point of this method is to have a nice even doneness gradient. So I really don't wanna do anything that's gonna work against that. Uh-huh, now, these are not particularly beautiful at the moment. They look like sad gray hunks of beef. That's why we're gonna sear them now. I'm gonna add a little butter to the pan for more flavor, but you don't have to. I'm also going to add a thyme sprig and some garlic to the pan to quickly get some more flavor into the fat in the pan. Also that you don't have to do, that's all optional, but it's, it's a nice touch if you can do it. In we go, steak, butter, garlic, thyme. Swirl that around. Press it down, make sure the steak is making full contact with the pan so you don't end up with a a little raised portion that didn't get brown enough. 45 seconds, a minute, really as quick as you can. Any longer and you might as well have just been butter basting in the pan the whole time because you'll start to get that done as gradient. I'm gonna flip it. There you go. Sear the edge. See that how that's nice and brown there now? Look good. Kill the heat. Now reverse sear doesn't really need to rest. It's so low and slow coming up to temperature that you don't have the same issues when you're doing a high heat method of, of giving the steak a chance to reabsorb juices. You basically can cut into it whenever you're ready. 
Mm. It's really good. So tender, so juicy, so beefy. With that great funk. Because I splurged on an aged steak. Ah. And by I splurged, I mean, seriously, it splurged.